Hello everybody, so this is part two of uh, the video on Parvo and what you're going to do to, well, we talked first about symptoms, diagnosis, and briefly about treatment. Now this whole second part is going to be about specifically about treatment. Um, right, so first off, I'm not a vet, so anything you get from me out here is just from my experience. If it doesn't work out right, don't come back and scream at me. And I don't like giving out dosages because that's the place where really that, um, you know, people can make mistakes. And I suggest that you Google this or talk to your vet to get specifically what dose you're going to give in terms of things like antibiotics. All right. So we've got a dog. We've diagnosed that it's got parvo. We have isolated from any other dogs. We are being extremely careful to clean the area with one part bleach to 10 parts water all the time. We're collecting up any towels, bedding, things that the dogs puked or crapped on. All of these things that go into a plastic bag, they're gonna go into the trash. We're wearing gloves all the time. We're making sure that we are, the shoes that we have on stay in that room because we don't want to carry anything off to any other dogs because this is such a highly transmissible disease. And remember, the way it gets transmitted is, is through feces and it doesn't take very much to all. It's very, very contagious. So you really have to be scrupulous about your cleaning. It gets very boring doing this, but you have to do it. So what can you expect? Well, from first symptoms of parvo, typically about three to seven days after um, exposure, the dog will start to show symptoms of, of parvo, lethargy, then vomiting and diarrhea. And you can get on this quickly. You can get a dog that's in much better shape after three or four days. And maybe after a week, the whole thing is, is, is gone away. Not to the point that the dog can now be with other dogs, but the point where you know the dog's gonna be okay. So it doesn't take a lot of time to get this done. So what do you do? Well, of course you can go to the vet, give the dog to the vet and let the dog, let the vet take care of it. It's not what we do. Um, I, I think that you know, if you do this at home, you can do this literally every few hours you can look after the dog. And that's probably not gonna happen in a vet environment. And, and I think that generally dogs that have parvo the last place you wanted to go is the vet where it can affect other dogs. So I don't like the idea about going to the vet, but a lot of people would disagree with me, probably vets. They would, but again, you can talk to your vet about this, but I'm just gonna talk about what the treatment is. And this is the treatment that we've done successfully at home. So the big, big thing is hydration. The problem is, is these dogs have, um, they're vomiting like crazy. They've got lots of liquid diarrhea and that causes them to get dehydrated and that alone will kill a dog. So you've got to hydrate and hydrate and hydrate. So how do you do that? Well, basically saline solution, better yet is uh, um, um, ringers, lactating, lactating solution or ringer solution. Um, the, this, these come in an IV bag. You can buy an IV bag and you can go, that's it. This is the stuff that any vet will have. You can go get that from your vet. So there's two ways you can administer this. One way is, is that you put an IV into the dog's arm, tape it up properly. That's one way. And that's probably what your vet would do. There's, that's harder for you to do because you've got to know how to put an IV line in. And that I don't think is the kind of thing you're going to get done the first time. But you can simply inject this into the skin at the back of the neck, exactly the same way that you give a shot. So you get a, you know, six, 15 cc syringe with a 22 gauge needle works great. You tent up the back of the skin on their neck, you know, on their shoulder. And this is a, what's called subcutaneous under the skin. It's not in the muscle and it's not in a blood supply line, like a vein or an artery. It's just you lift the skin up and you stick the needle in and you squirt that fluid in and you will produce a big bulge on their neck like they look like Quasimodo, got a hump back. And after about 50 minutes, that pump will have disappeared. It's been absorbed to their body. The problem is you can't just give the dog Pedialyte to drink. By the way, I would put Pedialyte out and you can squirt some Pedialyte in their mouth with a syringe. The problem is they're likely just to vomit it back up and they're not gonna voluntarily drink this stuff because they feel so awful. So the problem is getting in this way is not very good. They've got a compromised gut. Getting it in intravenously or inter subcutaneously un under the skin is the way you have to do this. How much do you give? Well, you give about every time that they are throwing up 
or got diarrhea, the volume that they've puked up or pooped out is what you're gonna put back into the dog. That's what you're gonna do. And what you can do is you can start weighing the dog and seeing whether the, you're keeping the weight up on the dog. I've not done that, but that's something that I saw somebody had mentioned. But you're gonna give, you know, it depends on the size of the dog, six to 10 cc's of fluid, probably every couple of hours is what you can do, maybe more to start with. But the whole idea here is, is if they've puked and pee, puked, not peed, puked and um, vomited, that volume of fluid has got to go back into the dog. So you're going to do this a lot more to start with. When you first see this, it won't be too bad, but it will get worse over the next few days. Probably day two, day three is the worst condition you'll see the dog in. Hopefully day four, the dog will start to do a turnaround that by day five, the dog might be eating a little bit of food and drinking some water. But this is the thing you've got to stay on top of. This is your hardest job right here, is to get enough fluids into the dog. Um, you can make saline solution. You can go online and you'll see how to do it. Distilled water or boiled water with the appropriate amount of, of uh, salt, just regular table salt, a little bit of sodium bicarbonate. You can actually make your own saline solution. So if you're in a pinch, you could make this, but it's so cheap and it's so easy to come by, the ring is lactating solution is really what you should be getting. Comes in a bag, it's got a port on it, you can go pull fluid out from it. Um, you don't wanna have that super cold when you put in the dog, by the way, but I would store the stuff in the fridge. Okay, that's, that's the first thing. So this is your primary job to keep that dog hydrated. Okay, anti-vomit medicine. So you've got to go to the vet for this. You're not going to get this over the counter. There's four or five different drugs and you'd rather have an injectable version of this. So the problem is that if you give it orally, the dog's probably just going to throw it back up and you won't know it. So an injectable version of an anti vomiter medication is the thing to go get. That is going to have to get from the vet. Same thing again. Uh, you want to give probably amoxicillin but you want an injectable version of this as well. And it's all of this, by the way, is gonna be injected the same way, just under the skin, but you could give tablets. The problem again is just like the anti vomitant medicine, they're like just gonna throw it up and you're not. And by the way, the idea about taking a tablet, crushing it up, making it into a liquid injecting, I don't like that idea at all. So you've either gotta get a proper injectable version of this. Um, um, you, you know, later on in the treatment, you can use an oral version of it, which you can get over the counter. I'll tell you about that here in a moment. But this, these things, probably you've got to go to the vet and get these things. And look, not all vets are going to give this to you. Some vets may say they want you to bring the dog to them. So you've got to make a decision about how you're going to treat this. My vet, all of my vets, will supply me with everything I need. My vets would as soon not see that dog in their office. And they're smart. All right. Um, all right, so the next thing is, they're feeling like absolute, I mean the right word, but feel like dog shit. They actually feel terrible. Pepto-Bismol, especially they've got some blood in their, in their stool, which they likely will have, give them some Pepto-Bismol, give them a teaspoonful of Pepto-Bismol, very safe stuff, helps just generally coat their stomach. Now, you would think that you'd give them an anti-diarrhea medicine, and typically you don't do that. Um, you want, you remember that all of this nasty stuff in their, in their, in their gut, you want them to get rid of it. You don't want it staying in there. So generally an anti-diarrhea medicine is not the treatment for this. But Pepto-Bismol to calm their tummy down is fine. So that's about a teaspoon whenever you think you need to, which could be a couple of times a day. Okay. Um, you'll see people talk about Tamiflu. as Tamiflu is a treatment for this. And there is no Clinical trials that show that Tamiflu is effective. Now, if you want to go give Tamiflu, you give it a day one, go for it. I don't think there's any harm in this. But I think that probably it's since the research says that it doesn't appear to be effective, that there's probably not any great value in Tamiflu. Plasma. Some people have been giving plasma to dogs. I don't know enough about this. I've not used plasma. Uh, I think that you have to give plasma from a dog that has already succumbed, already been through parvovirus and got antibodies in its blood. That's what you're trying to do is give the dog antibodies. So plasma from a dog that has been through this may well be beneficial. How you find that, I don't know. Right, so now we've got, you know, this is the first, right from the very beginning, we're starting to 
we, we immediately give um, antibiotics, we start giving hydration the moment we see the dog starting to puke and, and, and vomit, vomit and uh, diarrhea. Uh, we start the anti-vomit medication the moment the dog starts to throw up and give them that to try to stop them from throwing up. Give them Pepto-Bismol to treat their tummy and make them feel a little bit better. Um, and then hopefully by about day four, the, 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 dogs are, the dog is feeling quite a bit better and maybe we'll start to lap some, some milk, some water up from a bowl. In that case, Pedialyte. Give them Pedialyte. Pedialyte has got the necessary salts and other bits and pieces in it to help somebody who has losing. So you can get Pedialyte, you can get it over the counter, get that stuff. So <clears throat> bland food, so, so I'm gonna put down Pedialyte and I probably spelt it wrong, and if I have, that's my bad. Bland food, baby food, Gerber baby food, you know, chicken beef flavored baby food, human baby food, you know, that's good stuff, human baby food. It's very light on the tummy, human baby food. So, you know, Gerber makes a whole line of this stuff. And again, you can just go to your local grocery store and get that. You could even at some point start to put some Pedialyte in a syringe and see if they can put some in their mouth. Don't overload them with it, but you could start that maybe at day two or three, you could try to give them some Pedialyte by mouth. You can't give them too much, they're just gonna vomit it up. But if you can give them some Pedialyte, great. I don't think you're gonna get very far with the human, with the bland food until you've got to the point where the dog is starting to die down on the vomiting. But hydration number one, the antibiotics, they're not treating the parvo, they're treating the secondary infection. You can get secondary infections going on because of the damage that's being done to the gut. There is no cure for a dog that has parvo where you can give him some medicine that just gets rid of it. It's a virus. Uh, so the only way that you can treat this is to um, give vaccinations prior to the infection. So that's something that we talked about on the first video. It's super important that you are aware of the fact that this is something that's your responsibility to make sure that your dogs are vaccinated correctly in the right order at the right time with the right number of doses. And if you do that, the chance of you going through this is relatively small. What else? I think that pretty much covers it. Oh, I was gonna tell you about the, the injectable. So you can get uh, these antibiotics, this will be oral at this point. The dog now, we're at the point now, the dog has stopped throwing up, but we're gonna to continue to give antibiotics for the next 10 days. So there's a lots of different antibiotics that you can give, but one that you can give, which is a recommended is amoxicillin. And you can get amoxicillin over the counter and it's called Fishmox. Fishmox. It's designed for fishes. There's a whole bunch of medicines that I get that I don't have to go to a vet for that are not, they're not FDA approved for humans or for dogs. I use them on myself and I'm, Absolutely certain they come off the same production line with a different label stuck on them. Fish mox is moxicillin. Fish pen is penicillin. Fish flex is a flaxin. Um, fish, let's see, what's metronidazole called? Fish, uh, fish zol is metronidazole. Um, there's probably some other ones I can't even think of off the top of my head. But all of these things are designed to be put into an aquarium for fish, but they are exactly the same. Uh, uh, Fish, uh, let's see, there's a tetracycline would be, uh, uh, what would be the name for that? I don't know, I forget. Anyway, but you can, there's a whole bunch of them. You can go on Amazon, you can go on Chewy, you can buy these things without a script, antibiotics, and they have a good shelf life in the order of many years. And if you don't have these things, I recommend that you go buy some. You can't buy them on my bit of supply, I don't sell them, but they are there specifically for fish. Okay. I think, you know what, I, and I apologize to people about snapping this stupid thing. I'm gonna stop doing that. As of now, you're gonna, I'm not gonna keep snapping this lid. I know it's annoying for people. Sorry about that. It's just a habit. I think that's it. Um, you absolutely can take, you know, 80%, 85% of dogs that have parvo, especially if you catch it early, they're gonna survive it. So my success rate's been 100%, but it is an effort. It's well worthwhile doing it, of course. Uh, if you go to the vet, expect to spend something between one and $2,000 a dog to go through the treatment. I, I think that potentially that you can do a better job at home, but keep your vet in the loop on this. Talk to your vet about it. Don't just take my advice. 
Make sure you've got the right stuff to do it. Make sure you understand what you've got to do. Get it done and your dog will probably be survived. And once your dog has been through this, they won't have it again. They are then got antibodies in their system where they will not get it again, probably ever. There, there is a possibility, I'm clicking this thing again, there is possibility that uh, you could get it a second time, but I think it's almost unheard of. Um, you can damage a dog going through this. A dog can have severe problems. You know, they can have damage to their heart, they can have damage to organs, so there can be some bad things that are repercussions of all this. But if you catch it early, and if you stay on top of it, the chances are that the dog will come out the other side of it as a healthy, happy dog, and it'll all be fine. So, there we go. Please subscribe to us, My Breeder Supply for products. We sell lots of products that are wonderful for all kinds of things about breeding dogs. And if you like what we're doing here, subscribe to us. If you've got things that you want us to talk about, let us know. If you think we're idiots, let us know in a constructive way and we'll address that too. And I'm clicking the silly thing again. I don't know what I'm going to have to do. I guess I'm just going to take the top off and take the top off these silly things. Thanks for watching. Good luck if you have Parvo. I hope you don't get it, but you know it's not the end of the world. It is treatable. Bye, everybody.